I love this one, love this one. My favorite is... Hi, I'm Cynthia. Today I'm trying an acrylic painting technique using a spoon. I've seen people do this on YouTube and on Instagram. It looks like a lot of fun. I'll be using different sizes of spoons. I'll be making multiple paintings, so stay until the end for the big reveal of all the paintings. And if you like puppies, if you like acrylic painting, and if you want creative inspiration, subscribe and let me know in the comments that you subscribe because I would like to reply to you and welcome you in person. Let's paint with spoons.
I'm gonna show you each painting with close-ups and stay till the end for the big reveal of everything together. And I'm gonna give you some tips if ever you wanna try this that will definitely make your life easier than mine. This was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be, but it was still a lot of fun. I need to get used to painting with a spoon. It's not the same as painting with a palette knife. A palette knife has some give, it's flexible. So when you try to apply pigment, it's a lot easier to direct lines in a specific direction for curves or straight lines. Spoons are not flexible at all, which makes it a very different experience. Harder in my opinion, but still fun. But having different sizes of spoons, different uh, shapes as well, some more pointy, some more rounded, really helped in achieving different styles of flowers. It was also fun to experiment with the different parts of the spoon, like the edge for sharper lines, the handle. I wanted to do many paintings just because I wanted to explore. I didn't know how it was gonna be and I didn't want to waste canvases because it's expensive. So I used canvas paper. And if ever you decide to paint like me and try a bunch of experiments, I suggest you use a thick paper, as thick as you can get it because the amount of paint that you put on the paper is surprising. It builds up really fast. And that's another point that I wanted to mention. It kind of wastes paint. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say waste, but it uses a lot of paint. That was one of my mistakes. My layers of paint were very thick, too thick, and it kind of smeared the colors together a lot and it made my life a lot difficult. So if you do it, try to put thinner layers at the beginning and then put big blobs at the very end. I also suggest limiting the color palette because when too many colors are involved and because there's not a lot of control in the form of the subject, it becomes messy really quick. Another mistake that I made was using paint palettes. That's another way to waste more paint. It's better to leave the paint in smaller containers and scoop some of the paint as needed with the back of the spoon. You could even squeeze directly from the tube on the, the spoon, which I didn't do. I thought it would be nice to add some graphic elements, especially to the flowers that didn't work as well to see if I could kind of salvage them. <laughs> like on this one, I used masking tape to block um, a shape and I used metallic paint, gold paint. One thing that I feel really helps the painting come together is to use markers at the end, waterproof markers. I used a Sharpie, a thin Sharpie, and also a Micron. It's especially helpful to create the stem or to put in a bit of more details in the petals or the leaves. It gives an effect that is a little bit more neat than just leaving it as is. Personal opinion, of course. I also found that using a stiff brush to create spatters a little bit in certain paintings gave an interesting effect given the fact that the spoon gives a very rough texture. I felt like that really went well together. Even though it was harder than I thought, I definitely was getting better as I was practicing. I could detect what worked better and what didn't. One thing I noticed though was that the simpler compositions work better. So one or two flowers worked a lot better. I feel like it's because there's so much texture going on with the spoon that when too many flowers were, was involved, things got a bit muddy. It was kind of fun to see the paint randomly blend together and having less control to create the, the petals and the different shapes 
because it the randomness made the flowers more interesting in my opinion if you try this i really suggest adding some flares at the end the way i did whether it be some line drawing adding a little bit of metallic paint or some graphic elements because I feel like it really, in some cases, makes the painting come together. I like that the spoon technique is super random because I wouldn't have gotten something uncontrolled and very unique otherwise, but adding the flares at the end really makes it. Some don't need it, some are unsalvageable, but some really come together at the end because there's a few paintings I really didn't like, but once I worked it a little bit with spatters or whatever, it changed my mind and now I really like what I see. I don't know which one is your favorite. Some are a lot less successful than others. Obviously it's hit and miss, but I think my favorite one is this one. I really like the way it came out. I feel like a big part of the beauty of this technique is the randomness and the fact that it's accessible for anyone to kind of have fun and explore with it. And if you want to know my favorite acrylic painting tips, go watch this one. It's a good one. I think you'll like it. Don't forget to subscribe so I can reply to you and I'll see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.